Victory would have enabled Russian forces to sweep further west along the Black Sea coast towards the huge port of Odessa and a major nuclear power plant. Instead, Ukrainian troops, supported by an eclectic army of local volunteers, delivered a crushing blow to Russian plans, first by blowing up the bridge and then by driving the invading army back, up to 100 kilometers, to the east. It's hard to explain how we did it. It's thanks to the fighting spirit of our local people and to the Ukrainian army, said Voznesensk's 32-year-old mayor, Yevany Velichko, standing in body armor with his guards outside the town hall. But almost three weeks after that battle, the mayor warned that another attack by Russian forces was probably imminent and that the town's defenders lacked the weapons to hold them off a second time. This is such a strategic location. We're not only defending the town, but all the territory behind it. And we don't have the heavy weapons our enemy has, he said. As on so many front lines in Ukraine, British-supplied anti-tank missiles proved crucial in turning the tide against Russian armor in Voznesensk, leaving the town littered with up to 30 tanks, armored cars and even a helicopter. It's only thanks to these weapons that we were able to beat our enemy here. And we say thank you to our partners for their support. But we need more. The enemy's convoys will keep coming, said Mr. Velichko. Voznesensk's strategic significance became clear soon after Russian forces failed to capture an even larger bridge, further to the south, across Ukraine's second-largest river, the Southern Butt. Today, Voznesensk is not quite a ghost town, haunted by regular air raid sirens. But thousands have left in recent weeks, by train or on potholed country roads that wind through vast, rolling fields of wheat. Many of those who have chosen to stay behind still seem eager to talk about their remarkable victory.